Hi guys. This is not my car. And uh, before we go into anything that we're going to discuss today, I'm just going to balance out the perspective first, okay? Do you guys know how much the Range Rover Sport is? If you're not aware or not sure, it is about somewhere 750 to 800 plus thousand ringgit, okay? 700 plus to 800 plus. That is the Range Rover Sports price, okay? In all other markets all over the world, the Range Rover Sport is the same price as the Volvo XC90 T8, all right? The top spec XC90 T8 with inscription or inscription plus, they are about the same price. And the only reason that the XC90 is being sold in Malaysia, the T8 is being sold in Malaysia, is because it is a locally assembled two liter hybrid that enjoys a hybrid tax incentive. Okay, that is the only reason we are able to buy the car at 400 ish thousand ringgit 403 if I'm not wrong and same goes with the uh, S-Class hybrid same goes with the BMW X5 hybrid the 3 series hybrid the 5 series hybrid and the 7 series hybrid they enjoy some form of tax incentive and of course through the incentive program whereby they pay lesser resulted in a lot more people buying and at the end of the day it benefited the country in terms of taxes because in quantum in ultimate quantum um, the reduced tax that resulted in such huge numbers ult ultimately contributed more tax return than were if they were charged full okay that was the logic behind uh, the previous government's uh, initiative which is not bad to be honest <clears throat> now this one is the Volvo XC90 T5 okay this is not hybrid and this doesn't enjoy the uh, tax incentive so let's compare this car in terms of specifications versus the one that was supposed to be 750,000 ringgit okay this is 370,000 ringgit half the price now I throw up I throw out the part whereby there were tax incentives because I have no idea what price would this car be if it has tax incentives all right so I will roughly compare between the full taxation price and the full taxation price of that that should be about 750,000 ringgit this is half the price so half the price from 400 horsepower to 252 horsepower from 640 newton meters of torque to 350 newton meters of torque uh, from panoramic roof to without panoramic roof heads up display to no heads up display Bowers and Wilkins to no Bowers and Wilkins 360 cam to reverse cam Napa leather to the usual leather I mean usual as in match up matches up to uh, Mercedes and BMW and that's about it so you lost about 150 horsepower you lost about um, about 290 newton meters of torque and sunroof and um, Heads up display, Bowers and Wilkins, Napa leather, oh, rear aircon vents. Uh, no, I mean rear aircon control. The vents are still on the B pillars, right? The aircon controls and some wood garnishing and uh, and of course the uh, the hybrid mode has the uh, crystal gear lever. That's about it. However, when you compare the uh, tax-free not tax-free tax incentivized price of the uh, t8 and this one there is only a mere difference of 30,000 ringgit yes only 30,000 ringgit difference 
separates this two. I mean, the Bowers and Wilkins alone is worth 20 over 1,000 ringgit, right? However, oh, you also lost the air suspension, but the air suspension is a double edge thing because it cannot go through speed bumps like this one does. All right, the air suspension from the XC90 T8 is absolutely fantastic on the highway, but it cannot deal with sudden jolts because it doesn't calculate fast enough. This guy can go through speed bumps in about like see 30 30 plus kmh. That one couldn't. That one you have to slow down to about 20 kmh or lower than that. All right. So in terms of suspension, this one has a wider breadth of usage, I would say. Uh, and of course, that one you can lower the car and all that. However, think about this: the T8 is a plug-in hybrid. This one is not, right? And I know more than quite a few of you out there who are petrified, who are absolutely horrified by the idea of driving a plug-in hybrid, right? Some of you has sold off your A6 hybrid before or your Honda Civic 1.3 hybrid. Uh, some of you may have that kind of experience with uh, hybrids of yesteryears and you are just petrified with this whole idea of lugging around a huge battery, complicated systems, all those things in the car. In fact, the T8 weighs a couple of hundred kilograms more than this guy here. This guy is plain simple. This is just a plain simple uh, two liter combustion engine, a transmission and four wheel drive, long shaft, that's it. All right. Some people ask me, Bobby, do you think that compared to a petrol combustion engine, a hybrid will have more potential issues? I say, of course. Let's imagine this. Let's say you're cooking in the kitchen, okay? You are a chef. Okay, no, 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 no. You cook at home, okay? Basically, you cook at home. You have the uh, stove or the cooker and then you have the gas canister from either Petronas or whoever else. I think it's only Petronas, right? The gas canister and then the stove, right? You hook up the gas canister to the stove and then you go like tuck, 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 tuck. Fire comes out and then you fry your eggs. That is very, very simple. Now imagine this. Imagine your house. You mounted some solar panels on your roof and then you hook up a dynamo to your gym equipments at home, okay, your gym cycling equipment. And then you pull those two wires to a battery that can charge and discharge, all right? And then you let, when the sun comes up, you will heat up the, the solar panels, the photovoltaic, and then they generate electric and then the electricity is stored inside the battery and then when you do your gym you know you run the dynamo the dynamo spins generates electricity and then it also goes into the battery once it's fully charged the battery will deliver the power to your cooking stove which is electric now to generate heat so that you can fry your egg and in between all that you have a couple of uh, circuit boards that controls the power input and output that tells the system, all right, the battery is full now, let's divert the charge directly to the cooker. Oh no, the cooker now requests a lower output and then sends the, the thing back, vice versa. That will be plug-in hybrid and the stove and the cooker will be a normal combustion engine, 100% you will have less potential problems because you have more things in the system, you have more chances of it going out. Like I mentioned, things that move might one day stop moving. All right, so that's the difference between these two. If you want a fast free ownership experience, basically it's just a simple combustion engine you can go for the T5, you know, because it's a lot lighter. You can feel the car feeling, uh, even though it has less power, but it's, it's more lively, I would say. And you have a conventional all-wheel drive system um, with some electronic decoupling. 
and then you have a brake pedal that feels like a normal car because in the T8 when you depress your brake pedals your brake calipers do not move at all I kid you not the brake calipers do not move and how do you slow the car down it is actually the dynamo the and the motor will spin the other direction and absorb your kinetic momentum not not the motor will spin the other direction basically the motor locks up with your wheels and then your wheels as it's slowing down it pulls the, the motor along the dynamo along and then the dynamo will be slowed down by the copper wires that is around it because the magnetism is generating electricity that sends back into the battery pack here and charges it right and then your brake calipers do not move until the very last moment that you need to come to a complete halt that's when it clamps and a lot of people couldn't get used to the brake pedal feel of plug-in hybrids because in a normal car when you apply let's say 10% of your let's say 20% you apply 20% of your brake pedal and you can already anticipate you don't need to depress to 30% to 40% to let the car come to a halt you just apply 20% 20, 20 and then the car will roll to a halt because you are using time and distance coupling with that amount of braking force to let it friction its way until it comes to a halt however, in a plug-in hybrid if you only depress that much it will only keep that much generating it will not quickly pull the car down to a halt that would be the problem of a uh, plug-in hybrids uh, brake calipers so these are the few big differences but when it comes to the spec of the car if you were to ask me uh, how is it comparable with the others for 370,000 ringgit you are getting an engine that is a uh, 252 horsepower 350 newton meters or 254 i'm sorry 350 newton meters of torque you have the full safety system which is um, pilot assist where you can uh, initiate semi autopilot which this function is unavailable in any of its competitors all the way up to 600 700 thousand ringgit when it comes to uh, range rover sport or um, GLE and the likes of it they do not come with this feature so in terms of safety even though this car is only 370,000 ringgit uh, it still beats uh, Q7 or whatever those that are not plug-in hybrid okay uh, even the X5 doesn't come with this feature all right um, why is it able to sell a full-size SUV with tax at only 370 plus thousand whereas the Range Rover Velar which is also a 2 liter turbo ends up at 500 over thousand ringgit it's because Volvo went to extremes to take out the things that you do not need and only put in the things you need we need keyless entry yes it's there we need the full flash infotainment system it's there we need a reasonably good sound system is there I mean this is the base lah, huh? and then we need all the safety features that Volvo has to offer and the full fledged matrix LED headlamps up front all this the car comes with it all wheel drive everything it comes with it um, the things that we don't need the little luxury features would just be the uh, Bowers and Wilkins and then the um, rear aircon fan control panel and things like that and this car still gets the drive mode I can shift to dynamic and the throttle response and steering and braking feel all sharpens up and it's still a very fast SUV to be honest and it handles well enough the handling of this car is pretty good for its size to be honest uh, the body control is what amazes me the most even that it is so big right and then mid corner uh, braking you don't really unsettle the car much that amazes me all right so this car even though it's so big it drives 
like a smaller SUV but nonetheless it is still tall uh, so if you're not I'm not saying it handles like a sedan there's no way it can handle like a Cayenne or a Macan there's no way the, the, the tall center of gravity of this car can be felt okay but it is way way livelier than a Range Rover Sport way 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 livelier by far and the way it pulls you would have thought this is a 3 litre because this engine pulls strong in this car that is the most surprising thing about this car full size SUV yep. so I guess that's how it drives uh, that's the positioning of this car I'm gonna find a place that is not so hot to do my walk around video the brakes are good as well I think I enjoy driving this I mean enthusiastically more than my own T8 the T8 feels high-tech feels like I'm going down the stairs holding a stack of really expensive glassware that's that's the feeling this one feels more chuckable more throwable more abusable I guess yeah all right cheers but if you were to ask me if you walk into a Volvo showroom now they have the T8 and the T5 I cannot I cannot ignore the fact that they are only 30,000 ringgit apart and you get so much more with the T8 so 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 much more in terms of features but like I mentioned it's not just the features you have to live with the plug-in hybrid part which I've been living fine with it for one year to be honest mine is perfectly okay but I've seen people who have had issues with their cars all right but majority of us our cars are fine uh, maybe the guy abuses his car I'm not sure all right so yeah if the T8 is available the 30,000 is so is negligible because it's supposed to be 300 400,000 ringgit more but then it's only 30,000 ringgit more but even if one day the T8 is no longer around this car is still highly competitive it still has everything in of course, I hope Volvo can put in a little bit more stuff and let the price, you know, go up a little bit maybe. But still, it's perfectly enough. All right, cheers. Okay, from the exterior of the uh, XC90 T5, the only visual difference that you can tell apart from the XC90 T8 is the lack of chromey stuff around the front face here. And then this grill is in black which is quite nice and of course you don't get the yeah, 360 cameras over here and then the rims are different and if I'm not wrong they are one size down which provides better ride okay and of course the wheels don't look as glamorous and you don't have a uh, 360 camera underneath the side mirrors and you don't get the panoramic sunroof and if you notice this is different this is raised up so that uh, it's a different look pretty nice there is a difference in it and then from the rear apart from the batch is very difficult to tell them apart all right so it's totally not embarrassing at all to have to drive this because it's not the spec until you know, like like previously the GLC 200, they don't even come with keyless, right? So in terms of exterior, the T5 all-wheel drive will have this batch. So I'm going to give you a slow overview about this car. In terms of exterior, it is still a handsome, handsome looking car. And I reckon with that roof reel on top, it actually looks more family. It actually looks more uh, down-to-earth, more utilitarian, more off-roady. Yeah, it's still a very good looking car and the black grille actually looks really good mainly because the reason it looks so good is because they did not down spec the headlamps the headlamps are not the uh, low spec headlamps it is still the full fledged 
LED matrix LED kind of headlamp. All right, it's uh, still really nice. All right, come to the side. These Michelin latitudes are fantastic SUV tires. You know, from the looks of it, you never thought you you never would have thought that these are uh, tires that are chuckable for an SUV. You would have thought it is hundred percent comfort, but tell me, I may I tell you, man, you can really corner with that. That is pretty amazing. All right, you get power boot as well. Everything behind here is identical. Okay, you have the. Uh, this and then oh 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 it's not not everything is identical the third row doesn't get uh, air conditioning vents in the t5 okay the t8 has it but the t5 doesn't but then the second rows um, air con vents are still there so I reckon you still can channel air in but of course um, I didn't know they turned that into an option I thought if you spec seven seats you should get the third row air con vents now, here is the same. You still get the booster seats in the middle. And uh, as we come inside here, oh, mosquitoes. Now, the interior garnishing. Some people do not like uh, wood garnishing, right? And this would work really well with them. Brush aluminium and is rather reflective, but it's matte reflective so that it doesn't send glare into your eyes okay the rear seats they are reclinable oops let me show it to you okay. the second row of the xc90 is you can recline them okay see just now was level with this that's a normal level and then you can, you can recline them uh, relatively no. Okay, see that? Okay. And for my row as well. Yep, that's it. I need to start the car. Double the hand. Okay. Let's go back. So, I'm in the second row of the XC90 T5. You still get the blinds. You still get the aircon vents and the B pillar. And you get a lot of leg room, a lot of knee room, a lot of head room. It's still very, pretty much very comfortable. And then, slim armrest. But you still get a cup holder. And I like the fact that because it's slim, you would have thought how deep of a cup I can slot in, right? You see it rise up Whew, to give it some height so that it holds your drink nicely in place. And this mechanism looks really slick. Right? That's pretty nice. See, there's a mosquito we have over here. And uh, build quality is largely the same. And uh, some some guy in the XC90 group actually said that he wanted this leather instead of the Napa leather. Now you know why? This leather is thicker and it's actually slightly more durable than the soft and plush Napa leather. But Napa leather feels really good to the touch. Okay. Center console, you don't get the uh, crystal Oroforce gear knob because this is not a plug-in hybrid. This is just a standard internal combustion engine. And I believe I've shown this to many before. This is possible because it's designed to hold your phone nicely. It's designed to put cups or cans because cups and cans and phones are supposed to be gripped by our palms. All right. So that's the console. It looks largely the same apart from the fact that given that it's metal, it looks a little bit more avant-garde you know not it doesn't have the uh, wood feel right 
uh, as for the steering wheel it's largely the same the buttons are the same as well it's not like the uh, xc60 t5 where the buttons are, are matte you know this button looks exactly the same as the ones in the uh, t8 and you still get the uh, colored infotainment screen oh no sorry the speedo clusters the full volvo sensors infotainment system and everything else is largely the same apart from uh, the speakers and the 360 cameras the panoramic roof and things like that all right so let's go to the front as for the uh the seat adjustments um i only do not get the uh, extension of the seat bench in the t8 you can extend the seat bench out and pretty much that's about it in terms of memory settings it's still the same you still get two uh, both are memory seats both memory has three memory options and then um, the other features are all largely the same all right everything is the same so let's recap this yes it's only is 30,000 difference which is not a lot 10% um, difference in terms of pricing um, but you get a lot more in the T8 and that's because it's tax-free not tax-free tax incentivized all right so one day when that is gone we can no longer buy a car that was supposed to be 800,000 ringgit at 400,000 ringgit we just have to go for this which is still not bad but compared to what the T8 is there's no reason now to buy this to be honest if the T8 is still available but if the T8 is not available uh, there are certain specs in this car still makes it class leading safety per se cheers